Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you here to City Hall uh, for our annual celebration of Lithuanian Independence Day, or in this particular case, we're calling it Lithuanian Independence Day weekend, seeing as the date actually follows tomorrow on a Saturday. Uh, but uh, we're just as proud to celebrate it uh, today. I want to mention we do have a number of elected officials that have joined us here today. I want to make sure that I recognize them. Uh, from Ward 6, Jack Lally, City Councilor, is here. John Buckley is our Plymouth County Registrar of Deeds. Mark Lindy is here somewhere from the Southeastern Regional School Committee. Uh, Ward 5 City Councilor Ann Beauregard is here. Uh, we do have from Ward 7, City Council Shirley Asaf is with us. And then from our legislative delegation up on Beacon Hill, we have State Representative Michelle Dubois yeah. and State Senator Michael Brady, who will be up in just a few moments. And I want to be sure to mention um, that Representative Cronin and Representative Cassidy are both tied up on Beacon Hill, but have sent their best wishes and their regrets for not being able to be here today. Uh, we're going to open our ceremonies uh, by having the United States National Anthem performed by Marite Bizenkauskas. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare bombs bursting in still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner wave o'er the land of the free and the Marita, I think the acoustics here in City Hall were built just for you. Uh, at this time, uh, I would like to uh, invite an old friend up to uh, bring the invocation, Deacon Bill Jackson uh, from St. Mary's in Lynn, but more importantly, originally from the east side of Brockton. Come on up, Deacon. I take back the more importantly part. I guess I probably should have said that. Also from the east side always from the east side. Your Honor, thank you very much. Please be seated, everyone. Svakina me, Bractuno, Latuve. How was that? Did I do all right for an Irish boy? <laughs> My friends, it's an honor to be back in Brockton. This is the land of my youth, where I was born, brought up, educated. I am so proud to be here with you today. I grew up on the east side, right around the corner from St. Coleman's, and my grandmother lived on the Brookfield side of Brockton. So we went a, a lot through the Lithuanian village. Very familiar with St. Casimir's. My dad played softball with many of the guys from Lithuanian Village, and then we all got to enjoy pizza at the Sandera Club afterwards. <laughs> My buddy John, his mom made the pizzas. <laughs> Wonderful. I think about the Lithuanian immigrants who came over 100 plus years ago, and how hard 
they worked in the Brockton shoe factories, how hard they worked at making a family, being a good citizen, loving God and his church. I thank God for the sisters of Jesus Christ crucified, Our Lady of Sorrows, who came over here not only to educate our youth, but to minister through nursing to the elderly. And who can forget the great Labor Day parties that the sisters would throw? Now, I have to be honest with you. I'm always honest, but I'll be very frank. <laughs> Sister Nunciata, who is with God now, used to chase us out of the yard because we'd go and play there. And Sister was always good because she'd give us treats as we left. So, brothers and sisters, there's a lot to be thankful for from our Lithuanian friends. I'm blessed to have had you next to me as I grew up on the east side. I'm very blessed for all the friends that I made from St. Casimir's when I was a kid and after ordination. So with all that, I think we should bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Almighty God and Father, we praise and we bless your holy name. We ask you to bless the people of Lithuania. We ask you to bless the people who came here and became Lithuanian Americans. Let us always be mindful of the good work that they did and continue to do. Bless them, bless their families, and bless us all. And God, please, bless all immigrants. And we ask this in your holy name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Now you see why we keep bringing him back every year. At this uh, time, I'd like to invite up uh, with her remarks the um, Council One President from the Knights of Lithuania, Marite Bizankauskas. You might want to take a seat. This could take a few minutes. <laughs> I'm going to cover some of the things that the deacon mentioned. Um, Broughton was the world's main shoe manufacturing center from 1880 to 1935, boasting 39 factories and tens and thousands of jobs. Like other industrial towns of the era, it attracted Lithuanians to even establish their own district, the Lithuanian village. The Lithuanian village was full of Lithuanian businesses. Three bakeries, a grocery, a deli, dress shop, pharmacies, so much so that it was possible to live there without ever speaking English. Even now in internet forums, the inhabitants of Brockton remember it as one of the hearts of Brockton, while even the local media names it the Lithuanian village, something rather rare in the United States where a few districts are known officially or semi-officially as Lithuanian. The center point of life here was St. Casimir Lithuanian Church on Ames Street. Originally established in 1898 with the original wooden church located on Webster Street. Its current church building was constructed in 1957 over a 1914 constructed basement. This was a common way to build Lithuanian American churches by expanding them as more donations were received. The basement church even had a different name, St. Rocco. Monsignor Strakowskis used the church dedication to change the name to St. Casimir by claiming that the church on top of the basement is, in fact, another church. In 1913, in that basement church is where the Knights of Lithuania Council I was established, living the ideal for God and country. The Knights have members in many states. St. Casimir's Church was closed in 2008, and the Lithuanian village gradually became a mixed community. However, there is still a significant number of Lithuanians who reside in the village. Adjacent the church, there still stands the largest and oldest of Brockton's monuments, this one dedicated to those who died for Lithuania's freedom. It was erected soon after the restoration of Lithuanian independence, which happened on June 10, 1990. 
The monument consists of a red and white obelisk full of Lithuanian symbols, namely the coat of arms, columns of Gediminas, and the cross of Vitis, as well as Lithuanian and English dedications. Because the Lithuanian community feared the monument would be destroyed, they tried to move it to another location, but the monument proved too sturdy for that. The fears that the monument would be destroyed were not warranted, and the monument still stands today, although the flagpole is now devoid of a Lithuanian flag. Brockton has more memorials for Lithuanians who died for Lithuanian freedom than any other comparable city in the United States. In total, we have three, and then one more for those who perished during Great World War II. Brockton also has a Lithuanian convent and a cemetery. The former Lithuanian village also has other monuments commemorating important events, just a short walk from the church. The former rectory is dedicated to Monsignor Francis Strakowskis, the Lithuanian priest and former pastor of the church whose image appears on the memorial. It declares the area to be Lithuanian Plaza. The second monument is dedicated um, to Brockton Lithuanians who fought for the United States in World War II. The first surname listed on the memorial is Václavas Tukis. This monument is nearby in Tukis Playground, which is named after him. There is an extensive list of young Lithuanian Americans from the village who died serving their country in World War II. Two more buildings in the village still bear Lithuanian names, one of them the Lit Pub, established in 1897 and closed in 2000, after more than a century of service. And another one is the St. Casimir Convent, which has a Lithuanian-style sun cross on top, although it no longer serves its original purpose as a convent. The Little Red Schoolhouse still stands next to the church, and all the Lithuanian-American youth of the village graduated from St. Casimir Parish School or the nearby Franklin School. In the past, the Lithuanian social life of the village was tremendous. Every Labor Day, some 10,000 Lithuanians and non-Lithuanians used to come en masse to Our Lady of Sorrows Convent on Thatcher Street to the Lithuanian picnic. This tradition died out in the 1980s after it became difficult for the aging sisters and volunteers to keep it running. Community events like sports matches, dances, picnics for the Lithuanian Radio Hour and other Lithuanian parishes were celebrated in Ramuva Park. And in case you didn't know, Romuva means a Baltic pagan temple and is now used as a name for the Baltic neo-pagan movement. In the time the park was established, however, it was likely not seen as a religious, but rather a historical or cultural name, as evidenced by all the Christian organizations that used it. The park is now overgrown, however, and nothing remains of Romuva Park except its Lithuanian history. Brockton, has another heart of Brockton is in the Lithuanian community is the massive Lithuanian con convent, the mother house of Our Lady of Sorrows convent, which is one of several orders of Lithuanian nuns that were established in the United States for Lithuanian women to serve their communities as nurses, administrators, and educators. The most interesting location in the convent area is the small cemetery, which has an elaborate grave sculpture of Father Alphonsus Urbanavichus, who was the founder of this order. The sisters are buried here, and it is the site of the second of Brockton's memorial for those who died for Lithuanian freedom. This one is the smallest and the simplest, a stone with a Lithuanian coat of arms engraved on it, but it has a Lithuanian flag perpetually waving over it. The monument was built here after the St. Casimir Church was closed in fear that the memorial there would be removed or destroyed. The cemetery was chosen for this location because nothing that has been constructed in a cemetery can be demolished or destroyed. The nearby St. Joseph Manor is a home for elderly Lithuanians cared for by the sisters. It still serves the community at large and maintains its Lithuanian roots. Although it is part of a network of Catholic facilities, it still has a beautiful traditional Lithuanian wayside cross at the entrance. And the third memorial to those who died for Lithuanian freedom has been constructed adjacent St. Michael Church in Avon, where most parishioners from St. Casimir Lithuanian Church joined when St. Casimir's Church was closed. The memorial is rather artful, incorporating the sword and the sun, which were removed from the village memorial. 
The new monument at St. Michael Church incorporated these pieces to erect a similar but smaller version. And in the 2000 census, about 2% of the city's residents indicated their ethnicity as Lithuanian. As you can see, the Lithuanian community has left an indelible mark on the city of Brockton. We are proud this city is our home and we value the opportunity to live, raise our families and to work here. And if you want an opportunity, please drive around the city and take a look at some of these beautiful monuments located throughout the city. Thank you. At this time, uh, from the state uh, delegation, I'd like to invite up State Representative Dubois. Thank you, Mayor. Carpenter. Hello everyone. I'm not Lithuanian, but I don't even play one on TV. However, I did grow up attending St. Casimir's Church my whole life. I, I uh, made my first communion and confirmation out of St. Casimir's. I have a very um, tender part of my heart back to St. Casimir's in the Lithuanian village where all very wonderful, caring, kind people embraced my family that weren't Lithuanian and helped us um, through the years. So I want to say I respect very much the people of Lithuanian ancestry and the people that live here in the city and are Lithuanians. So thank you very much. Okay, at this time, uh, on behalf of the city, I would like to issue the official proclamation uh, recognizing Lithuanian independence. And uh, John, would you like to come up and, and receive this on behalf of the community? John's instrumental in putting together this event every year, and we appreciate that, John. We want to recognize it. So this is an official proclamation from the city of Brockton. Just so that I don't get anything wrong, I'm going to put my glasses on. Yeah. Here we go. So whereas in 1795, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was dissolved and divided by Prussia and Austria, the majority of Lithuania was placed under Russian rule. With the end of World War I and the fall of the Russian Empire, Lithuania declared her independence on February 16, 1918. And whereas during the 1940s, Lithuania was occupied by the Soviet Union and later by Germany, by the end of the decade, Lithuania returned to Soviet occupation and lived under communism for more than 50 years. And whereas on March 11th, 1990, Lithuania became the first Soviet Republic to declare its independence. And whereas our vibrant Lithuanian American community has made tremendous contributions to the city of Brockton, now therefore be it resolved I, Bill Carpenter, as mayor of the city of Brockton, to hereby proclaim February 15th through February 17th of 2019 as Lithuanian Independence Day weekend. And we'll recognize Lithuanian independence throughout the weekend. We urge all residents of the city to join us in observing. And it's uh, my privilege to present this uh, to John representing the Lithuanian community. So at this time, uh, I'd like to invite Marite to return to perform for us the Lithuanian National Anthem. And uh, as Marite is performing, we'll invite some, John, can we lead some representatives of the community in raising the flag. Uh, we will raise the flag here in City Hall.
Thank you, John. This will conclude the official part of our ceremony, but you were invited to stay and enjoy uh, the display of Lithuanian history and culture, along with some ref refreshments that have been provided. So we hope you'll stick around City Hall for a little while. Thank you. Thank you.